Hello, everyone. My name is Raven, and welcome to Raven67854 Gaming. And uh, welcome back to my Left 4 Dead 2 tutorial series. In this tutorial, we are going to add some static props into our level, and we will also add in some health kits and some ammo piles so that, you know, the player can replenish their ammo. And both of these are very simple, uh, which is great because, you know, what better way to start the second video than with something easy? Now, if you run into any issues, do comment below or there's a link to the Discord in the description and you're more than welcome to, you know, join the Discord and, you know, ask for help or anything like that. So, where should we put our... Uh, let's put it over here. Yeah, I like it over here. Okay, so we're going to hit Shift-E or you can come over here and click the Entity tool and then we're going to go over here into Objects and we're going to type... Okay, it would actually help though if we were... Uh, actually, you know, inside of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to type prop static, select it. Now, there are two ways to do this. Obviously, of course, you know, you can place things, you know, inside of any of these viewports and you get this lovely little tool and you hit enter. Then you'll get a red cube or you can just left click anywhere you like and you'll just start adding props into the 3D scene. Now, obviously, of course, you know, we don't want that. By the way, you hold control and then left click and you can select multiple objects. We're just going to delete that. Now, there is two ways to get to the properties of an object. First, once it's selected, you can right click in any of these other three viewports. Well, the orthogonal viewports, or you could just double click in the 3D viewport. So, as I mentioned in the last video, we're not going to explain literally every single detail because we're just going to gradually absorb and learn everything that we need to. So, the pitch, yaw, and roll, we are going to learn, and that is basically the rotation. As it says over here, it's the entity's orientation in the world. Uh, the minimum and maximum CPU and GPU levels, I actually don't ever actually use. Uh, I have to actually, I'm going to have to look those up. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, disable X360, I also do not use. Um, the world model is the actual model in question. Uh, you can also change the skin, which some assets have multiple skins. Uh, there's the collision, which you just want to leave it on as using VBox, unless you want players to be able to walk through it. And you can also use a bounding, uh, sorry, a bounding box, uh, which I believe is just slightly cheaper, but you know it's more like a cube, if I recall. Uh, you can disable shadows. You can set the start and fade, which we'll talk about the lighting origin. Uh, you can disable vertex or self-shadowing, which we'll look at in a, another video. You can tell to ignore surface uh, normals. You can set the alpha, and you can also set the color. Now, we're not going to touch any of that in this video. Again, we're going to slowly and gradually get into this. So what we're going to do is we're going to select world model here. And then I have no earthly idea, uh, you know, why... Uh, it's already set to table, but uh, I'm okay with this. So this is actually the table we're going to use. So in the filter, you type in table, and then you just scroll down until you find table shed. Well, table underscore shed, but you can use any table you like. Now, if you go over here to skins, you'll see that all of these have just one skin, which is skin zero. But if you find one, like this one right here, has multiple skins. So you can you know, tell it to pick a different skin, and then it'll... You know display that material which is very cool but we're gonna stick with the uh sorry the table shed there we go and you can rotate by just holding left click and you can look at the model and yes it really is that slow and i have no idea why and we'll just hit okay and then we'll hit apply awesome so you'll probably notice that our uh, model is very much turned the wrong way so what we're gonna do is for the y'all, we're going to set it to 270. And then we're just going to hit apply. And boom, it'll rotate it. Now, there's another way that you can do this. And so inside of your, when you have your tool selected and your selected entity, uh, when you see a little, the little square, all uh, eight of them here, uh, that means you're in translate mode. So you can move the model around the screen, up, down, so forth like that. You can do Control Z to undo it. If you left click once on it, you'll get the rotation tool. Whoops, probably would help if I didn't misclick there. And you can rotate all around. 
but we already had it where we wanted it. And the last tool is, I believe, skew. Uh, but we don't really need that for this. And it doesn't work anyway, because all it does is just translate, because this is an entity. But we'll see what a lot of this does when we uh, start messing with more advanced features of the brush. Okay, so we're just going to zoom in down here on the uh, right view. And then we're just going to lower using the left bracket. And we're just going to lower this until it's level with the floor. And then we're just going to kind of set it about right there. And then we're going to control C and we're going to control V and we're going to click it into the viewport there. And that'll just drop it straight on in. And much like before there, whoops, we're just going to, you know, I just want it to be a little bit off from the wall. You know, nothing, nothing fancy or anything like that. They're actually equal now on each side there. Okay, so now that we have our tables, now we just need to actually, um, you know, put our object on there. So how do we find the items in question? Well, you could go on the wiki and just look and look around. And you can also scroll through. And the first aid kits are marked as first aid kit underscore spawn, which is the ones we want. And then we'll just left click in the viewport here. Ah, okay. It doesn't just, uh, this is one of the, okay, I can't just plonk this one wherever I want, huh? Fancy. Okay, and then we'll just hit enter, and it will appear. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just line up our camera here so we can see what we're doing. And I am just going to lower the grid down to one so that I can make it flush with the, uh, with the table. And then I'm just going to slightly rotate this so that we can see our little backpack. And then I'm just going to click over there, add a, another one, drag it down. And then I'm just going to control click, select both of them, move them over, move it up, and move it down. And then I'm going to hit control S to save. And now what we need is a ammo pile. So let's take a little look, see here. Here we have weapon underscore ammo spawn. And let's just actually put this over here on this side here. So what we'll do is we will just maneuver this over ever so slightly. Now remember, we're still on snap grid one. And we'll just double click. And we have some, uh, some extra stuff here. Um, so like, for example, count max number of weapons given before disappearing, stuff like that. And we are just going to select world model and we are going to hit browse. And then we're just going to type ammo. And we're going to look for whatever ammo you're looking for here. Uh, I'll just use the old school traditional ammo stack here. And I'll just put it down, kind of rotate it around a little bit. And then I'll zoom in and I'll make sure it's flush with the table. I think did some of that disappeared. Nope, it didn't. Okay, good. Perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control S again. And we're going to run the map. And we're just going to make sure that everything works. Now, because we don't have an actual weapon yet, we're not going to be able to check the uh, ammo spawn. But we should be able to highlight over and they'll probably more than likely go ammo here. So we'll have a pretty good idea if it's working or not. But the main thing is making sure that the health packs are there and nothing fell through or anything like that. And we're also going to have a nice error because we do not have... Um, wow, okay. So we're going to have to fix that. That's going to be the next thing to fix is the lighting. Uh, that'll probably be a quick video unto itself really quick. But we can go ahead and hit this. And then if we had... Uh, any ammo, we would replenish it. Okay, so that's how you add static props. And that is also how you add in your health pickups. So in the next video, instead of weapons, we're actually going to look at adding cube maps to fix the lighting so that we don't get weird quirks like this. So 
Thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you'd like to support this channel, you can become a member. Uh, there's a link in the description, and there's also a join button as well. At the end, there's a card with a dollar sign, which you can join, which is the membership thing. And for five bucks a month, you can get access to a whole slew of content, as well as you will also get early access to pretty much all my videos, which uh, I believe you can actually see them once they're uploaded. I believe people can see them. I'm not really sure. I'm very new to the YouTube membership thing, so I'm still figuring that out as of this video anyway. So again, thank you guys for watching. If you run into any issues, I'll see you over on the Discord or in the comment section. Have a lovely day or night or morning or whenever time of the day it is. Maybe it's brunch. Who knows? I'll see you guys then. Well, next time.